Welcome to a Real Man Wood podcast. This is Chris Liss, your host, and I am joined as usual by my co-host from Yahoo Sports, Dalton Del Don. What's going on, dude? How you doing? Doing all right. Uh, my daughter just turned five Sunday, so we had a birthday party. Uh, my wife did most of the the hard heavy lifting on that, but I'm certainly glad that's behind me. And then today I had an inspector at my house all morning. We we're considering buying the house. We've lived in it for a long time, so it's kind of long overdue. We've never done that. I've never been a homeowner, and uh, the inspector had like a termite guy over, a roof guy, so just a bunch of people in and out of the house all day. It took about four hours. Never had that done, so glad to have that over with. Uh, what about your, what about yourself? Liz? Are you What's just up? buying the house you're already living in? Yeah, yeah. It's just no, we've been here a long upgrade time. From that dump. I, I wish. Yeah. No, I, I mean, yeah, I, I wish, as you can see, uh, I, I, I'm you know, reporting to you from a dungeon here, as people have pointed out. So, yeah, it's the best I can do, man. I don't know what to tell you. All right. All right. I thought that uh, Yahoo money was going to, uh, you know, lead to something big. Well, if the Phillies don't win, actually, um, I'm in a survivor pool with uh, March Madness and um, it's 109 people and it's $100 buy in. And I did two of them. So the payouts, you know, more than 10 grand. And uh, after this, uh, right now, entry, and they're down to 25 entries left, and I'm two of them. So I, I, I maybe, you know, if, if things go right this weekend, maybe I will have some, some extra income to try to step it up here. The 10 grand is going to make a difference in your house? <laughs> a huge difference. Yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, okay. Uh, I didn't realize. Well, I thought you were in California, but maybe you're somewhere else. You know, maybe you're right, in, like, right. Venezuela or somewhere like that. No, you just gave me an opening to kind of brag that I'm doing well in this uh, this little thing here. I mean, 10, 10 grand, I don't know what I'm doing. And, and I realized I didn't watch one college basketball game this year, not one. So, yeah. So, yeah. Anyway, something to look, look for. Did you, did you do any brackets or anything? I did. I'm in your pool. Was that, was that a pay pool that you sent out, or, or do I owe you money or what? Oh, yeah, that's 50 Yeah. Oh, that's 50. horrible. That's $50 right. I just lit on fire. What'd you have? I was like, I'm What'd just going to sign up for this. I have Villanova winning it, but I, I when Virginia lost, I was in New York you know, this weekend, right. and I came home late. And I, wa- I was actually at Foley's. It was like the Tout Wars party night, but I left at like 11 or whatever, or maybe 10 even. And I walked home. It was like three miles. I just walked because I just felt like having a nice walk. And uh, when I got uh, into Heather's aunt's house, her uncle was watching the game, and he's like, this is about to be the biggest ep- upset in history. And I'm yeah. like, really? I, I just assumed a 16 is taking down a 1. And I saw it, and I was like, oh, good. You know, I don't think I have Virginia anywhere. And then I checked, and I had him in the finals. <laughs> right. that's, how, that's how much time and uh, thought I put into my bracket. That I literally was cheering for the team I had in the finals losing in the first round. Right, yeah. yeah. Um, I think I have Duke. But, uh, yeah, it's been a total chaos on that left side. But, yeah, I have not paid attention to college this year. So, anyway, it's something for me to, to look forward to. But, uh, anyway, circling back, yeah, so that's what I've been doing. And, yes, I, I'm possibly buying a, a home and maybe I'll look to you for some advice. I know you've been to this uh, uh, multiple times. Like I said, it'll be the first time for me uh, dumping all I, I'm looking, I am planning on doing so. So we'll see the inspection part is over with now at least. Yeah, no, I only bought one house and we still have it in LA, but um, you know, it's, it's try to get a, try to negotiate with the bank or two uh, for you know the best rate you can get, try to get a 30 year fixed. Um, I would say, unless you're planning to, I, my brother is like a Wheeler dealer. He's always like, no, just get the seven year arm. And by the time that you, you know, you'll save all this money and then you'll already flipped it. But I like just having a 30 year fixed low rate and never have to worry about it. And if you move, if you stop being a nutless monkey and living exactly where you grew up, you could actually uh, rent your house out. And, uh, sure. and you know, as time goes on, rents go up, but your mortgage is fixed for 30 years. So it's a nice way right. to uh, get a little bit of a differential on that. That makes sense. All right. Well, we got a late. Why, why do we have a late start today? I, I got a Facebook live hit coming up with Andy here in a half an hour. So I know you no have a lot to talk about. about. I'm going to leave mostly the floor to you, although I do want to talk a little League of Leagues. I mean, we, there's so many dra- I mean, what you, you flew to New York. You did Tout. You did NFBC. I, I did League of Leagues. I mean, what do you want to start with here? Do you have anything else before we get into the actual sports uh, stuff? No, I'm good. I, I'm ready to, to roll on the NFBC stuff and the Tout stuff. Um, I'll say uh, I was happy with both. I was really happy with my tout one, to be honest. I mean, I, I just feel like that was too good to be true. I mean, I, you know, whatever. It's 12 teams. I'm sure, you know, the, the reality will hit at some point. Someone will get hurt. But did you see my AL tout team? Yeah, I have it pulled up here, too. So, yeah, so it's AL and it's an auction. So, uh, so talk about it. Well, you got like, caught uh, up. I, was, got I, was kinda, I, I didn't quite do the real man thing that you did in uh, labor. Um, right. You know, I was just in a little bit different state of mind probably than you were in. And, and I basically just decided uh, I'm probably going to go Kluber sale. I did halfway, and I was going to get, like, Chapman and Kimbrell and go all in. I, instead of going three starters and one closer, I was going to go two and two. But then right. I was like, I really want Stanton, and I think he's, like, a $45 player in OBP. So I just I threw him out at 39, and it stuck. 
because uh, I felt like I, I didn't want to have to say 40. I mean, I would have probably said 41, but I just thought like that might just be a, a time that people wouldn't go to 40. Maybe I would have got him for 38. I'll never know. Did but, anyone say anything afterward like about that? Nobody you know, really would they have was gone like, higher? It was crickets, but nobody was like, ooh, you overbid. I, I just think it was probably about what he should have gone for, and at least in their minds, and but nobody sure. wanted. It was like, you know, the not very long into the thing. I mean, in the first eight players, I own three $40 players, basically. And, and it really is the best way to auction uh, is to buy five players in the first 20 with, like, you know, basically two-thirds of your budget and then just try to wait try to wait. wait. Yeah, until you're the only one with money left, and then just like not only one, but have you know a, a decent amount of money left compared to everybody else, and then start right. picking off bargains. And I felt like I did that. And the reason that's really good is you always want to wait for bargains, especially when the top end goes big, like it did in this draft. But if you haven't spent enough money, then you end up leaving money on the table doing that. So this is like the best of both worlds. You get some huge stars, you get them early when everyone's kind of waiting around, and then you still pick up bargains. It's just the best way to do it, in my opinion. And, well, no, uh, often the worst buys are that middle tier when you realize, right. you know, oh, shit, there's only one first baseman left. And, and and two people, all it takes is one of the person with money. And then it, you're just in hindsight, it looks like a terrible buy, but it makes sense in the moment, just given what's what's available. It's timing matters so much. So theoretically, it does make sense what you're saying. Go early and late, early and late. Exactly. And yeah. uh, and just get your money spent. I mean, you know, it doesn't matter if Stanton makes money for me or Kluber sale. If they just roughly earn what I paid, that's fine. You're supposed to make profits on your cheap players because a $2 player that earns 15 I mean, like, no $40 player is likely to earn $15 more or $13 more than you paid. You know, you're just trying to break even or lose a little on those guys where well, you're trying to make your monies on the cheap guys. And You don't even need that much to go right for Nate Jones to be $18 player at all. I don't. Really. I don't. Um, I was kind of bummed, though, because I was trying to get Rodon to keep up with my DL team, just get all mm -hmm. the DL guys because I feel like right. in, in – Tout you have unlimited DL, so I can just stash those because it's not that I can find a great player to replace them. It's not the point, right? I mean, I still have Pedroia, say, for four or five months, so it doesn't really matter. I mean, hopefully I get somebody useful, but even if I don't, I still get four months of Pedroia stats for three bucks, which is just crazy. But also, it doesn't clog up a spot. So you can pick up minor leaguers that haven't yet been called up and stuff as long as you put them in your spot. So I can put Pedroia on the bench, get another minor leaguer you know, that may be called up in a little bit. Like, I have... Uh, Gliber Torres, he's going to be on my bench. It, it just seems like I just, I don't know. The team just has a lot of upside. Like, I think it's, like, a really good chance to, to win. Uh, and, uh, and I still felt like I, I spent, you know, more on pitching, I think, than anyone else. But I feel like I got enough bats, too. I don't know. Maybe I'm just being, uh, you know, maybe I'm being delusional just because yeah. it's my team. Of course. Well, you're always delusional regardless of the topic. But, of course, you got Buxton. That, that's perfect. But I want you to tell a story because I heard a little bit about the Bregman and Schechter. That's his, that's his nephew, legit. That's his nephew, yeah, right? That, that's Larry Schechter's nephew. Like, I don't know if it's his brother or sister, but it's his brother or sister's kid is Larry Bregman. I mean, Larry Bregman is Alex Bregman. <laughs> and uh, Is that like a Nick Kingery or Scott Kingery? Oh, I I, now yeah, okay. Now one, 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 one error at a time, dude. Don't, don't inundate me with all, all the errors I've been making. But, uh, no, I'm but, saying now I'm confused of what is that person's name is because of you because I've heard it so wrong. <laughs> I know, but it's confusing because I don't. I'm not like some prospect guru, you know. I'm just learning about these guys two months ago. But anyway, so um, you know, so Larry's the guy's uncle, and Larry just doesn't pay the extra buck for this guy. It's his nephew, right? And he's a really good player. It's not like he's some scrub. So you know, I would like draft Brendan Ryan for like a buck in like my leagues because you know I was friends, you know, played marginally softball. friends with him. Yeah, I played softball with him, and I was like. He's my friend. I'll put a buck on him. You know, Larry won't even. Didn't do that. you host someone from center field and like talk Yang to him or something? Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I one time I gunned somebody out at the plate during a softball game, and he was like just coming up with the Cardinals, and I was like, Jim Edmonds can't do that shit. You know, like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you told me that. Yeah. So I that was like you know, 12, 15 years ago. But anyway, yeah. um, so Larry doesn't really get his nephew in these. You know, Larry's a really good player, and he never gets his nephew, and his nephew has called him out on that. I think he was interviewed, and he said, you know, his Uncle Larry, you know, doesn't buy him in these fantasy leagues. That's and uh, so I, so when Bregman came up, I was, like, staring Larry down and, like, bidding him up, you know, like, come on, you nutless monkey. Like, you got to get your nephew. And he just didn't. He didn't care at all. So He's, he's too robotic, him. man. No, he sticks to his numbers. Come he on, it's check. Yeah, he's a he machine. Come on. Yeah. He doesn't care. It could, it could be his, you know, his son, and he wouldn't care. Right. You know? It could be right. his mom. You know, it doesn't make any difference. So... Right. You know, but I still thought so you're 20... happy with that team, and so so Jeff was in this league, right? And he cost you some money. You said, oh, "What a nutless monkey!" I might have to switch his picture for your picture. That dude knows <laughs> who I like because I talk to him every day on the sure. radio, 
Right. I, I'm sure he liked the players too, but you know he doesn't have his original thought. He's just like going off of what I think. So, he's just same as me, right? Same just, as me. It's just like you. You guys are like peas in a pod, right? Nutless monkeys in a sack. Lemmy. Okay, nuts yeah, in a sack. Um, anyway, so basically, you know, he's bidding me up on like uh, Tim Beckham, and so you know, he he alone cost me like ten bucks over the course of the auction, which was annoying. Yeah, I see as Cabrera too. I see that. Yeah, I mean, you know, I might have bid him up. I was bidding everybody up. I'm the only one who's price enforcing. These guys are such cowards. Like, I'm seriously almost got caught at Miguel Sano. I said 19, which I think is a good price, but it was not the time of the auction for me to be right. doing that. It was the time to keep my mouth shut. I'd already gotten my stars. I needed to, like, spread it around a little bit. And, you know, Jeff bid me up on Hanley. He bid me up on, like, three or four guys. It was really bad. Uh, so it would have been even even a more dominant team were it not for him. And he, it's not like he knew anything. He just he had inside information about You know, he's like, he's like a... Inside tr insider trading is what he's doing because he has information that he shouldn't have. So, but it was uh, honestly n n no bullshitting. Oh, g give me your honest assessment of that team. Yeah, I know the team looks good. You know me, I love Kluber and say, I mean, I love going big on those starters, so I'm gonna like it. Um, and, and I'm big on the upside, obviously. Bucks and Fisher could could go nuts. Um, I, I like your team. I mean, I, I see that you're really, really big on Tulowitzki. You think he's going to break out this year. I don't know about that, but, but he's, other, a, he's a buck. He's a buck. I mean, I he may, I he may retire next week and I would be like, Oh yeah, that's not surprising at all. But like, I mean, I think most projection systems have him hitting like 18, 20 homers. Right. I mean, yeah. he, he's supposed to be back sometime in April or May. It's not like he's supposed to be out for the year. He could be, but sure. for a buck, sure. I, I think sure. these guys just run, run from injury good. risk. Salazar's health is going to be huge, but sure, your team looks very, very, very good. Yes, it looks like a list team, so that at least you got you got that. I like Pedroia and these guys that because they get discounted even more so in these only leagues, obviously because there's no replacement value. So, so it makes sense. You know, you're not going to have you're going to get a zero there for a while, but that's why they're just three bucks. I mean, you get five months out of Pedroia, that's a humongous profit. Yeah, but same with Tulo. If I get three months out of Tulo for a buck, I know. But Tulo, I know. I think I've just written him off even further than Pedro at this stage. But but it's possible. But, sure, I mean, absolutely. He, yeah, he'll hit two. He walks a little. He'll hit two fifty with like a three fifteen on base and hit like you know ten homers in three months. I mean, it's a dollar. I, oh, I, you I, have I, you have like Guriel too, so you, and Torres. So you're you don't even worry about your standings like a month or two into the year, huh? You're you're definitely playing the long game here. Yeah, but the thing is, like, yeah, sure. So, but Guriel's going to be out like three weeks total you know i mean he's gonna get, recover from the injury then he got suspended for being a racist so he, he's out you know so i don't oh, worry about i mean, I mean fisher salazar's behind i, mean, I don't know i mean heaney's behind i mean it, i don't know you have some guys well, Heaney, saying, Heaney got hurt yeah, after i, I drafted I know, him. you I, can't you can't i have him everywhere in the last round at fbc too but yeah he's done i think but uh, yeah no no it's solid team good team i, I feel well, bad for like the justin turner owners it's like that you know we i can relate yeah. to them like i lost heaney they lost turner you know it's very similar yeah. Yeah, really, really similar. I can't believe I don't have Turner because I love that guy, but I don't own him anywhere. Uh, I was hoping you did. That sucks. All right. No, I assumed no. you did. I, I remember, no. You were trying All right, to let's go on to you, you were trying to Let's go to the main event. Bit. Okay, yeah, main event. Probably, so, uh, oh, I want to say one yeah. other thing that was cool um, about, and I, I, I talked about this on the uh, radio show. We did the tout event in uh, the Staten Island Yankee Stadium. Right. I saw which, that. Which is nicer than the real Yankee Stadium. Actually, I haven't been to the new one, but in some ways. Like, the backdrop to the Staten Island Stadium is the river and the Manhattan skyline. It's amazing. Like, you're looking, in, you know, out in the outfield, and there's, like, the cities behind you. I mean, the fact that they didn't build Yankee Stadium on that site is crazy. It's like, they should have, like, torn down that stadium and, like, built a bigger one because that's, like, the most amazing site. Maybe logistically it was hard or whatever. Anyway, so that no, was... It it sounds much like much nicer than the place that you've never been, for sure. <laughs> it's right. Well, the other one's right across from where the old one was, and I was at that place dozens of times. So okay, so nice. okay, so yeah, no, it really did look legit. Like even the locker rooms, I, I was I wasn't sure you were like in a minor league facility. It looked nice. Yeah, it was nice. And and the other cool thing is like we had time in between like doing the XM show and and drafting, and there was a batting cage. And you'll think I'm a nutless monkey with this, but they were pitching to me, and I hit a couple line drives, but, like, it really hurt. Like, it really, really hurt. I, I, I don't remember. I'm used to, like, aluminum bats with those rubber, you know, the, right. the rubber grips and stuff. Like, I didn't have a batting glove. It was pretty cold out. It was probably, like, 55 degrees in the, uh, in the area where the batting cages were. And every time, you know, if you hit it on the barrel, it was fine, but if you shanked one, which is, you know, bad pitches, people throwing you, like, you know, pitches out of the zone you're trying to hit, it hurt so right. much. I felt like skin was ripping off my hands. So... It was fun, but that was a little a bit, bit of a negative. So about 20 minutes before the draft, I went in by myself, and there was a, a batting tee 
And I'm telling you, man, that was like the most satisfying thing in my life. I had a bucket right. of balls, just like you'd be at a golf course, but I suck at golf. So right. if I'm at a driving range, it's like only like one in four is hit cleanly, that like beautiful right. feeling when you hit a golf ball. I was hitting like four out of five because it's on a tee, you know? I mean, I'm not like, I didn't play baseball in high school, but I played when I was a kid. It can swing a bat. And I'm just crushing those to dead center, you know, that feeling, perfect, fall through it. It was like such a satisfying thing. And I'm telling you, don't look at your spreadsheet before your auction. Go out and rake. Go out and do the real thing that you're doing for fantasy. I'm telling you, it gives you a huge boost. It puts you more in touch with what you're doing, with the thing you're actually evaluating. Go out and rake before your draft. It's uh, it's really good. Anyway. I would, give, I would give you a hard time, but I get blisters even golfing with the golf glove on, too. So my hands are weak, too. I'm sure I would be complaining, too. And the cold with the wooden bat, I, I could see. It's uh, not even weak. It's more just like I think you grip the bat too tight a little bit. And plus, like, you're, you're not good till you, like, make bad contact. Right. And the vibration of the bat, it's, it's unpleasant. I was thinking – I had, like, a lot of – I was thinking, man, imagine going facing a guy, like, when it's, like, 55 out and he's throwing 98 – and you like shank one off right. like the end of the bat, like how much that hurts, even with a glove on. I mean, Jesus. Right. Anyway. Did you have warning track power or what? I don't know. I would have loved to like put the tee out on the field and like crank. Right. I, right. Yeah. I, I'd like to see if I could hit one out. I mean, I, you know, I'm mostly like I said, I hit it straight up the middle, so probably not get it out. But I, I would have gone, you know, deep into the outfield. Um, anyway, so, I, so that was that. That was cool. And then uh, NFBC main event, Paul Spore was sitting two seats to the left of me. And Matt Modica, uh, one seat to the right of me. And, you know, this guy, Mike Masato, Mike the Mouth, they call him. Although he wasn't saying much because I was mostly just talking shit about him. But it was a fun draft. Like, people were talking so much shit. I was mocking all these guys. I made a couple errors. They were mocking me. You know, because I was giving it so much, I, they started to really get on my case when I started making a couple errors. But it was, uh, it was fun. And I, I like my team. But the thing was, my, my plan going in, I think you and I might have talked about this uh, last week, was right. I, I picked sixth, and, and I, it was my second choice in KDS, meaning you know, I was hoping to get sixth because I figured, okay, it's six, given where the ADPs are, there's like a 99% plus chance that I get either Kershaw or Stanton. Both were going... There's a real good chance you'd have to choose. There's, a, there's I thought, like a 50% chance I'd have to choose and like a 49% chance I'd get one or the other, and... I didn't really even think that because because I knew Paul also because I knew Paul and uh, his partner Dustin Wagner were taking either bets or Arenado. Paul t he told me because what did he care? I'm I'm picking after him. Right. And, so then it should be like ninety nine point nine. So so you know how Tuve yeah. and Trout are gone, right? So there's there's three right there. So they turn around. There's only yeah. two other guys. They have to both do exactly the guys I want, and both that both of those would be kind of jumping ADP a little bit. Yeah. And the guy at two picked Stanton right out the gate, and I'm like, oh shit. And so then, you know, I knew that three would pick, you know, Altuve. And then four, you know, that Paul picked Betts. And five goes Kershaw. And I'm like, fuck. Like, really? Seriously? You know, like, it's like a 1% chance. Yeah. I, I mean, it's not like my draft hasn't even started yet. You know, I haven't even, I haven't even made a pick crazy. yet. And I'm already, you know, lost. I'm like, oh, shit. So I actually took time on my first pick, which you can't believe. Right. You know, I'm sitting there like. Hmm. And with someone who dropped big time, like, I mean, really big. I mean, he goes third, what, in the definitely more than half a leagues, right? I, I think his ADP is probably three. Yeah. Yeah. Turner. I, mean, well, yeah. I, I, you know, I actually almost took sale there, believe it or not. Like, I, I just I think believe, sale is such a, you, you would be on board with that? Oh, yeah, sure, sure. I think that's really a close decision. Uh, yeah, definitely. All right. You're, we're having a little bit of a delay, which is annoying, but we'll try to power through that shit. Yeah, and I would take sale, sale super, super high. Um, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, but we just have a little delay. So right? I, I got a really big, uh, big money NFBC, um, the, uh, not the main event, but um, uh, I think it's the Rotowire one, $1,500 one, actually. Um, and uh, I drew the second pick. And I was just late. I just kept my KDS 1 through 12, and I'm regretting it now because I, I don't think I'm going to, I don't want Altuve, man. Who should I go with? Stanton. I mean, Kershaw or Stanton, right? I mean, yeah, one of those two, for sure. Yeah, I think I am. So I, I made a mistake getting the two, putting it there. But, oh, well, I, I just don't think I'm going to go with Altuve. But it looks I, I'm surprised. So apparently that's not that crazy, though, because in this one, he didn't go number two either. So are you OK with Turner? Or in hindsight, would you have been like, I would take five? Um, well, oh, I go down to five? No, I would I would either. I mean, look, I, I think six was the right call in terms of what I got on the way back and then the way forward again in the next two rounds. And so I, I wouldn't change the KDS. Uh, and I think that it was just crazy luck that I didn't get it. But um, is Turner the right pick at six? I don't know. I could see Harper. I could see Sale. So th those are really the two guys I would, you know, consider. Yeah. Maybe Arenado would be fine too. 
Uh, so I ended up getting Turner, and then on the way back, I wanted either Mad Bum, uh, Syndergaard, or Strasburg. Mad Bum went 16th to Mike Masato, so he was. There's no way he's getting back to me. Yeah. But then Strasburg didn't go till um, right before me, so I took Mad Bum. Right, yeah. So Syndergaard went to the, you took Mad Bum, then you went with Carrasco and Kimbrel, huh? So you did go pitching heavy again. I like it. I mean, I'm totally on board with this. I mean, I, I mean, that's uh, Carrasco had to be, uh, yeah, that's probably the last of those, uh, those big names. Who would you have gone if he wasn't there? Would you consider like, like, like Jansen there? I bet. I might have, but I wouldn't have if I knew Kimbrel was going to go all the way back to the fourth right. round. Like, the so only, you're pumped that, I'm huh? so glad I didn't take Jansen that Carrasco right. fell because then I'd be like, or I might have taken them both, and that would just be ridiculous. But. Right. But yeah, I mean, so because because Kimbrel felt like I got I got hit, I got Jansen in the fourth. So um, yeah, basically what happened was Judge was one pick before me, and Judge, you know, to me in round three I almost took also because I had yeah. I had Turner right, and then I had um, Bumgarner. So Judge would have fit perfect also. So I almost took Judge, but he went right before me. I was th- I was like, oh shit, I, yeah. I've got to think about this. And that's a fifteen team league, right? Yeah, fifteen. Middle third judge, you got to go judge. Yeah, right. I mean, there. I, I, I don't know if I would. I was like, wow, Carrasco and Judge, they're both two picks away, so this is good. I'm going to get one. So then Judge right. went, and I was like, okay, I'm taking Carrasco. Didn't even think about it. Uh, and on the way back, I was like, wow, Kimbrell made it. Didn't even think about it. And, I, and then in round five, I thought about Chapman, but I was like, right. dude, I've got Trey Turner and three pitchers. So if I go Chapman, I'm going to be the serious power defense. Defense. Yeah. Right. So I hate Nelson Cruz. You wrote that article. It's the only one that, that I have. But I was like, I got to take him. Like, it's round five. He fits the team perfectly. So I took him in round five. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's fine. I just didn't find any obvious guy in Seattle. It's just I'd rather be a year too soon than too late with Cruz. Right. And he's, like, yeah. already banged up right now. Yeah. But, I mean, it is cheap. He's been so consistent playing the amount of games, the 39-plus homers in, what, four straight seasons. So, And for your team, it fit fine. But I just get – I don't know. He's just It is kind of a nutless monkey pick, you know. Oh, but, I mean, sometimes those are the ones that win you leagues. Yeah, I mean, I was, I was really close. To, I, I really wanted to take Chapman and just get that second closer with crazy strikeouts. Yeah. But – I just you can't get too cute. I mean, this is this is not, you know, this there's no trading. This is the main event. Like I, I wanted to to build the team with some balance, and I actually thought about Miguel Cabrera there too, who I who I like more than Cruz, but I thought that he might come back, and then he did. So I got him, and then round seven, um, I Gallo slipped to seven, and I know Matt Modica is going to take him next because he's he always posts his picks, and I see him in every league. He's got him in every right. league. So it was Puig or Gallo, and I love Puig, but. I want to get the 50 homer guy, so I took Gallo, and uh, Puig got taken three picks before me in round eight. Yeah, I, I actually have had to make that decision a couple times, and I've chosen Puig, but I, I don't. I'm like debating right to the very end. That's tough. I always seem to have to make that decision. Actually, so interesting. You went with Gallo, and you're a Puig guy. Yeah, no, I, I was, but I also really like Gallo. I mean, I, if he can just hit like 235, I mean. It, let, let's and say especially you, you were after power. I mean, you're after power here too. It makes sense. Let me ask you this: just straight up bet. Who do you think is going to hit more home runs this year, Aaron Judge or Joey Gallo? Oh, yeah, that's super close. Um, oh, uh, home run. Wow, that's right-hander in Yankee Stadium. Go. I'll say Judge, but I wouldn't give you, like, odds or anything. Right, right. So it's like Stanton, Judge, Gallo, or like one, two, three in, like, projected yeah, home runs. Sure. So sure. with the team that started with Trey Turner and three pitchers, I then got Cruz, Cabrera, Gallo, and then I got another closer in Morrow, and then I got Sano. So, right. all of a sudden, power is a strength. Sano's going nuts, man, right now. He could, he could be right. huge. So, so, be a so p- power was a weakness, and then power was a strength. Then it looked like steals might be an issue because I only had Turner. None of those other guys running out. Maybe Gallo steal a handful. But I had all my outfield slots still open and two middle infield slots. So, that's where you get your steals. It's, it's, it's like I had no other steals, but those were all corner men. That were, so, right. those guys don't run anyway. So, that was kind of a neutral thing. So I ended up getting a lot of like Aaron Hicks, Ian Desmond, Kevin Pillar, Carlos Gomez, Michael Brandt. I got a lot of steals in there. And I got DJ LeMahieu because after I got Sano and Gallo, I was like, I just got to shore up a little batting average also. So I yeah. feel like I got everything. I feel like the, the weakness might be, we'll see about runs and ribbies from some of those like Gomez guys, you know, the Pilar guys. And then maybe um, batting average. I, really, I, I kind of screwed up with the catchers. I, I should have taken Christian Vasquez in, like, round 23, but I waited a little too long. 
Waka and Sanchez, two of your guys, two guys you love. So that's that's good. Um, couple of oh Neil Walker, I'm just loving late, man. People are just underrating the, the situation he found himself in, and people are looking at I think rankings that you know before he signed. I mean, I really like that situation. The one thing I would say that stands out to me, that kind of a weird pick from you, I'd say, is, is Colin McHugh. That that I don't know, big things of McHugh or something. I mean, no, I don't no, know. That, that was that was an error. That was my only. That was my only bad pick. Um, I was I was I needed a pitcher and I just was like stuck. I, I looked at the top guy on my board at that point was Marco Gonzalez, and I I, I looked him up again because I put him there for some reason, and I was like God he was terrible last year like he's not good, and then I was like Yeah he sucks. Then I looked at uh, McHugh's peripherals and I was like they were good last year as a, in twelve starts, and he's on a good team in a good park with a good defense. Maybe he'll be part of that six man rotation. But then right after the draft, they kind of came out and announced he's not going to be in the rotation. So oh, he took and one pick later, A.J. Minter left. That dude's like Kate, Craig Kimbrell in his prime for the Braves. He's going to be a monster. Yeah, maybe I should have taken him. That would have been probably a better pick. Yeah, uh, picks later. I like Shoemaker as a starter, too, went after him. But uh, whatever. We all, we all have yeah. our uh, – yeah. you know, that, that, that one was a weak pick. I, I got Patances in the fall, you know, a round or two later, so that's fine for that. But um, – yeah, I, I thought McHugh may get some starts, and I was like, wh- when I did that, remember I did all that wasteful research on the uh, on the replacement yes, level do. thing? Yes. What I actually right. found out that was really useful was that the, and th- this is like really crazy, this is a 12 team, so it's even worse than the 15 presumably, but this is the curated players that were in people's lineups, not their full stats, just the stats they had in people's lineups, which probably meant good matchups, you know, they'd pick guys up for like weak opponents, um, the guys that got cut immediately after they sucked, guys that were kept when they were good. The sum total of all the, you know, the acquired free agent guys in people's pitching lineups as, from starting pitchers was 440 ERA. I mean, that is terrible in a 12-team right. league. That means the, the back end of your rotation, the guys on the waiver wire in the 12, the back end of your rotation in the 15 is garbage. It was total garbage last year. If you try to, like, two-start – and get more wins and strikeouts, that was a huge mistake. It just destroyed your ratios. You were better off going with lower innings, you know, and, and being more, like, conservative on that and having a Batantis or a Miller or a Davinsky or someone like that. So I don't want to totally concede the back end of that rotation, but um, you don't want to just force in guys at the bottom. It, it, last year, well, I mean, maybe this year will be different, but last year it would have been a real disaster. No, absolutely. Um, all right, do you want to run over uh, legal leagues real quick? Yeah, let's uh, let's talk about how you who you botched that. Yeah, and I thought it was interesting because we've always gone heavy in basketball, and then everyone did the same, and we decided to zig when everyone zagged, and uh, it's pretty funny. So they are the most reliable. I still stand by that, but even though we lost, you know, Kawhi Leonard and, and Demarcus Cousins were our first two picks uh, last year. We had the 11th pick, and frankly, there weren't that many great. Ba- basketball players so we really mixed it up went heavy football heavy baseball and Jonah Carey didn't realize it but the 34th round is when we took our first basketball player 34th round and he's like wait what he's like if nothing else he's like you guys are always fun because before we punted starting pitchers right, right. we didn't do that but uh, anyways for uh, 14 team league Mike the Miz the dude from uh, MTV we like we had to hold up because the guy landed in, in New York because he was wrestling on WWE in Madison Square Garden that night. And we were picking back to back. He tweeted about it with our, our draft sheet. It's pretty funny. It lasted all day. Anyway, um, I won't go too crazy uh, with wait, our wait, team. Let me just say I one just thing. Say, real man doesn't do oh. fake wrestling. Real man gets into a real fight during the draft. I'll let him know. I'll yeah. let him know. He's talking trash in emails. He's funny. He's like, yeah. I've never, he's like, I've never been in such a group with so many virgins involved. Yeah, you didn't even respond in an email. You're such a coward. Come on, step it up a little. Oh, uh, everyone was like kissing his ass. Like they're so. Oh, we're, we got the Miz in our league. They were so impressed. A real right, man doesn't right. kiss the Miz's ass. Trust me. All right, we'll come back with something. Come on. Uh, I mean, I get. <laughs> I don't care. I don't care that he's in our league. All right, okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. So let's 14 team. This is our football team. All right. You ready for this? Mm-hmm. Jimmy Garoppolo, mm-hmm. David Johnson. Jarek McKinnon, our receivers Antonio Brown, Odell Beckham, Amari Cooper, tight end Rob Gronkowski. Crazy. It's and, crazy. And Flex is like whatever, Marquise Goodwin or right. Robbie Anderson. Right. And I just made sure we got Jacksonville Jags D because why not? I, mean, right. I took right. a, a fantasy defense in football before I took a basketball player. I like it. And, so, you know, it's actually really smart because, first of all, the other thing that people have to know, there are six keepers. And we didn't have any basketball keepers. Right. So right. if you don't have any, so other teams had basketball keepers and they were picking ahead of us, most of them in the draft. So right. why, you know, fight and waste all your top picks for something you're probably not going to win anyway. Whereas we had good baseball keepers. Why not crush baseball and crush football and totally tank basketball? 
And the other and thing that's good. The, sorry, go ahead. Basketball's the third one away, so it's you know it's uh, it's it, a lot of teams load up, and they just once they're out of it in baseball, they load up for basketball. So we learned that it's the toughest one, and so many things can happen between now and then. I mean, a basketball player could get hurt in the regular season this year, so right. I don't know. I think. I just think it makes some sense. I mean, sure, football is obviously more volatile, but man, those running backs make such an impact and, and basketball is further away. And there's only one bench spot I noticed too in basketball, which could help theoretically, but I don't think we're going to compete even if I did a miracle job. I tried to get young guys because they're the keeper factor, but I don't know. I feel like we're the favorite doing this strategy. In, in fact, I'd be upset if I were in this league and someone else, because what we did is we just 100% punted one of the three and became the, the obvious favorites to win the other two. And because there's a bonus for winning an individual sport, or that's got to you know, kind of be annoying to other people. Right. You know, what we're loaded on those other two. Yeah. You know what we should actually do is if we do win the other two, and baseball won't be a, a walk by any means, and football anything can happen. But if we start to you know do really well first or second in the other two, we should start thinking about um, you know trading and getting some basketball guys because I think if we just finish like ninth in basketball or something or tenth, right. it's awesome. going to be big. Yeah. And a lot of people who have tanked basketball, they'll be making a move in football or baseball and have traded away their you know mediocre basketball. Got, you know, there'll be a mediocre team and they'll be like, we can't win this. So let's just trade a stud basketball guy to, to one of the contending basketball teams. And they may kind of check out. So if we can get like 10th in basketball or 9th and we win baseball, football, or we tip, take first and second in those two sports, we could win the whole thing. One mistake I will say that was quite obvious is when we took Gronk in round five, right. uh, Kelsey Renton round, went in round 10. That was like, Ouch. Uh, that's horrible. But here's just a good representation. Then we'll move on. I love this. Round six. Here's how round six started. A.J. Green, then Blake Griffin, then LaShawn McCoy, Jordan Howard, and then we took Madison Bumgarner. Like, that's pretty sick. Like, a, that's a good representation right there of a run of who you're comparing across three sports. And it, it, was, it was really fun. But, uh, but anyway, I think, I think we did a better job this year. Well, clearly, we can't do much worse than we're coming off a bad second year of League of Leagues when we had a good first year showing. But it uh, should be fun. We're going to dominate the Miz. And that's the sickest football team I've ever seen. I mean, I mean it's a joke. I mean, it is. Football's so funny because there's no guarantees. Like, you could have put together a team with, like, David Johnson and, you know, and Dalvin Cook like and – Odo you mean Beckham. David Johnson, Antonio David Johnson, Antonio Brown, and Odell Beckham, and Rob Gronkowski? You mean that? Yeah, no, That's right, right. No, I'm saying, but this Every last kid. year you could have had Aaron Rodgers, right. oh, I got David you. Johnson, right. Odell Beckham, and just you know they all out for. No, the and it's head to head. You know, I mean, if right. we have the best team and it could stay healthy all the way to the championship and just face someone who goes off, but. But yeah. it's a pretty sick team, man. Our baseball team's really loaded with OBP. Like, we got Daniel Murphy super late for, like, an OBP league. And uh, I did, like, uh, I, I think it kind of worked perfect. Um, I, I filled out the whole second half with the b basketball guys. But I just throw a few names at you. Uh, you know, these are guys I've ranked around the area. And you just go with the upside guy. Ronald Acuna, Jarek McKinnon. I'm like, that's what I need lists here for. Just swing for the fences, of course. Oh, we got, I should, we got know. Acuna and McKinnon? Yeah, oh, yeah. Nice. No, we we had some, yeah, we, we we swung for the fences and, on a and, few. And uh, keeper, I mean, th that's like really good for keeper. Exactly. But before no, we got your we got your guy Gallo. We got Trevor Story. Yeah, we have Acuna. We kept Buxton. Um, yeah, like Greg Bird, uh, Garoppolo's young. Yeah, um, I don't know. We have some 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 young guys. But I did want to get uh, the first supplemental draft pick. You know, get Barkley. But he, he went pretty early, so we didn't get that. But, yeah, I mean, McKinnon, McKinnon could be a monster in Shanahan's system. They're paying him like they're going to give him, you know, 250 touches. Yeah, no, he could be a monster. But someone tweeted this, and this is true. Like, the the idea of Jarek McKinnon is always better than the real I, thing. I know. Uh, and I sort of like, yeah, it's kind of true. But you never know. If he, if he gets in that Shanahan system, it might uh, open everything up. For sure. All right, well, that's all I, I got. Um, uh, I think that, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll keep talking about League of Leagues, but that was fun. A lot, lot of drafting ready for baseball to start. Uh, one, one note I, uh, I took down, I was listening to you guys on uh, your XM show today. I saw you were um, kind of talking about, uh, or, or you were kind of against Reese Hoskins, and, and Jeff was going to bat for him. So for what it's worth, I looked at the Bill James handbook, and Citizens Bank Park is a one, it's increased home runs for righties by 24%. That's the most in baseball in the last uh, okay. few years. The most. He, he said 19%, Jeff. He looked it up on somewhere else. All, said, all sites are a little different. Derek right. Cardi's is a little different. Bill right. James is a little different. ESPN's a little different. But but Bill James is is right. literally, I wouldn't have said this if it was just top five, but it's literally yeah. the most for righties over the last three years. So that because is you're debating this. That is significant. Just, but uh, but you, you got to like the Brian LaHare comp. That was a good yeah, comp. Yeah, of course. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it wasn't a comp, not. but it just like, yeah. I, I remember like when I did my rankings, I just put him kind of low on my spreadsheet. And then when I got to draft day, I mean, I was such an outlier. Everybody was like taking him in the third or fourth round. And that's right. insane. The guy's like 24 years old. He was like hitting, he was crushing triple A at age 24. Ooh. You know, and then he yeah. had that two oh. months in, in the big leagues and everyone's like, oh, he's the next super slugger. 
We'll so see. Barrett, Andy Barron's really, really on Reese Hoskins. Mike Salfino really down on Reese Hoskins. So your team Salfino, just just so you know. All right, I might I might have to change my tune on uh, well, tomorrow. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm, I'm 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 on board. I'm on board. Uh, I, All I right. Just so what? Um, I got to come in. So what? Do you want to run? I was actually wanted to give you the floor about Facebook, man. I mean, do you want to say something? I, mean, yeah, I feel yeah. like you have to say something. Yeah. I mean, you have. To. So, I mean, Mark Zuckerberg. Like, I, I read one thing where there's like two trillion dollars in liability because like the penalty per user of stealing data is like forty grand times like five hundred million people or something. It's like, it's like some amount that would put bank put uh facebook into receivership it would, it would be bankrupt now you know we have such a bunch of nutless monkeys in the government against powerful interests that they're they're not going to do that but i mean th- he he basically this thing came up in 2011 and they agreed not to do this like this this is something it's not like zuckerberg came out and like it's like oh yeah you know the data was used inadvertently or whatever the hell he said and like no no, no that was what he said before that was seven years ago like this is violating that and so um on the one hand, you know, Facebook is a powerful corporation that uh, probably has enough lobbyists and people to fend off the, uh, you know, the, the, the real serious actions. But on the other, you know, people are really pissed about the election and Facebook's role in it, and uh, they really need a scapegoat. And that, like, you know, uh, Mueller I- inquiry isn't necessarily going anywhere yet, and you know, they don't have any sort of smoking gun. So, like, they're gonna, you know, pe- I could see Facebook and them being a big scapegoat, and then the political will to destroy them would be really strong. So it's gonna be really interesting to see how it plays out. I mean, my my bet is that they don't really, it's too big to kill. But um, I, uh, the, the, it's a filthy business. I mean, did you see that text that Zuckerberg sent when he was nine? I mean, he's nineteen, you know, so everyone's an idiot no, at nineteen. No, so he texted somebody. About. He's like, these fucking idiots just gave me all their social security numbers. You want to know anyone about Har- You know, anything about anyone at Harvard? I can tell you, they gave me all their info. And and, wow. and they're like, why do they do that? And he's like, because they're fucking idiots or something. I mean, I he's 19 and he's talking it. shit, but like that is right. the business model. I mean, they basically just took right. everyone's info, monetized the shit out of it in the dirtiest way possible. And now they're like, oh, you know, it's, it's so weird that this happened. You know, this is, we'll see what happens, but it's a, it's I, a I major would thing. Hear, I'd want to hear your opinion in general, but um, you've always been kind of down on Facebook. And I just thought you were being crackpot lists, you know, whatever. But no, you've you've warned against this. I, I will say you've warned against Facebook specifically. I'm not saying I'm not on it. I, I still am. And I like posting pictures of my daughter's birthday party or whatever. But this apparently is very serious. And I mean, the stock market, it went bonkers today. And, and Zuckerberg finally responded at least. But yeah, this seems serious. And I wanted to just say that, yeah, you have been pointing out that Facebook is uh, is problematic. Yes, I appreciate that. And remember, crackpot lists one day. Oracle list the next, right? So <laughs> just, just remember, just next time when, when I say something you, that I know you listeners assume is just some crackpot thing, you know, double check, double check it, do, look into it. Right. All right, man. Yeah, yeah, you know that everyone on uh, Earth is more than the co- combination of everyone who's died in, in the past? Right, I did, I did. I'm, yeah, so this is like the error podcast, like when I call that Davinsky and he'd already been picked. Yeah, I get it. Right. Yeah, all right. All right, you're, man. You're a poor man's Paul Sporer. I get you, I got gotcha. you. <laughs> All, All right, right let's take it easy, man. All right, All right, later. All right you too. Later, later man. Dawn. Bye.